Hello people, in this video let us look at um, the pedigree chart, the components, right, for the flow chart, the pattern. So basically, uh, very easy for you is this male is a square, female is a circle. Unknown uh, sex will be a diamond. So neither a square nor a circle. If the person is dead, put a line and below you can see D at which age, okay. So if the person is one line like this, the person is dead. Now, this is a partner. These people are married, something like that, married or a partner because marriage doesn't always produce children. Even otherwise, people can have children. So, this is a partner. If it is consanguinity, then there are two lines like this. Okay. So, consanguinity can be, um, you know, mother's brother, father's sister or etc. Cousins, etc. Brother's sister is first degree consanguinity, right? Now look at this one. For twins, they're just putting like this and putting twins like this. These are two male twins. These are dizygotic. If it is monozygotic, then there is an additional line in the middle. Okay. Now coming to stillbirth and miscarriage. This will be very important for you in obstetric history. So pay attention here. Now most of these are not noted at all. But if you go further and ask for the detailed history, you can get history of stillbirth and miscarriage. <clears throat> stillbirth is very easy. You just kill the baby with a line like this. And below you will write stillbirth at what week. This person was not born alive. Okay, but still the representation is the same. You are going to put a line. <clears throat> miscarriage and termination have very, very unique uh, representation. It's something like a hanging, uh, something like it has come out fallen kind of a thing i would say like hanging bell kind of a thing or you can say lamp so this is miscarriage and termination is where there's a line so this is very interesting isn't it this is something that wouldn't strike me and <clears throat> i would still put a line for miscarriage because that person is also dead isn't it anyways now look at these guys this is very important for you to understand if a person is clinically affected then it would be solid like this but if a person is a carrier then it is not fully uh, darkened so you should understand the difference between a carrier and a clinically affected person now in between there is something here where there is a solid and some other pattern these are clinically affected yes but several diagnoses this becomes a little complex for you so leave this at least remember if it is solidified then it is clinically affected if it is just a uh, center part they have marked then it is a carrier okay and then here they are saying positive pre-symptomatic test again this becomes a little complex for you leave that so these are the how this is how you will um, these are the symbols you will use in pedigree chart okay now let us look at some dominant inheritance now what are you seeing here the female is affected here the female is affected here so somebody or the other is affected in every generation so this is kind of dominant as soon as you see you can see somebody or the other is affected in every generation now look at the recessive pattern recessive <coughs> there are carriers right and only when two carriers are coming together are you able to see here only when two carriers are coming together not all children but one of the child is completely affected clinically affected okay so this is a recessive inheritance i won't tell you what this is can you guess what this is so carrier here carrier affected male so something like a female then a female carrier affected male okay are you able to see clearly female carrier affected male now female carrier affected male female carrier affected male and then from the male comes again a carrier female so a clinically affected male to a female so you can see how the males are affected the males are not able to escape isn't it but the females are just able to carry it so this gives you a clue it is an excellent recessive inheritance because females have two x chromosomes now let us go to the last one here <clears throat> okay are you able to see this one now try to guess this one two people are dead anyways that doesn't um, that's not very important because they become very old i think because if three generations are there here okay so 
one thing they have not followed their own rule they didn't tell at what age they died right they told that you should strike it off and put a d and put the age anyways so this is female who is a who is clinically affected so interestingly the female and a male her both the children are affected this is really interesting look at this a female is clinically clinically affected both her daughter and her son are clinically affected then this daughter's child is affected all the three children of this daughter is affected male is not sending it that much again this is a female female is giving it to both her daughters but the male is not giving it so this is a what do you think this is this is a mitochondrial dna disorder because the mother gives the mitochondria something like that right so this is all about the pedigree chart you have looked at the symbols you have looked at a dominant inheritance a recessive inheritance x linked inheritance and a mitochondrial dna disorder that's all for now in this video bye bye